Hello guys, my name is Anna and I'm a Ukrainian and I have decided I will vlog daily from my country Ukraine since the start of this awful war with Russia. And in my daily videos I try to update you on the important real life situations in Ukraine and of course I'm always glad to answer your questions and to clarify some facts from our culture, our history or whatever interests you. And today I want to dedicate this vlog to a trial that was recently finished in Ukraine um, over one Russian soldier who killed a civilian and committed a war crime on the territory of Ukraine. Of course, there are thousands of such crimes and the main criminal stays in the bunker somewhere in Russia. But I really believe that trials like that are extremely important. And perhaps I want to tell you a few things that we Ukrainians follow. And I believe that many such cases must be investigated and demonstrated both to the world and to Russia after the fall of the Putin's regime. Because from what I know, one of the very effective tools of working with society that was influenced by dangerous totalitarian philosophy like the Nazi Germany was to demonstrate them the results of their crimes. And as far as I know, there were lots of films demonstrated to Nazi soldiers showing them the crimes that were committed in concentration camps, the crimes that were committed against civilians. So I think something similar should happen in Russia. I don't know how likely that is. I don't know how likely it is to see Putin one day in uh, something similar to the Nuremberg Tribunal or uh, in Hague. Uh, and maybe not all of these decisions are like um, help us um, revive the people who died, but at least they demonstrate that we can read justice and also they demonstrate the violence, the crimes that Russian orcs commit on the territory of the independent and beautiful country Ukraine. And the story of this Russian soldier is pretty sad. I can't even remember his surname because perhaps this is one of the not Russian surnames that was Russified and Russians love to Russify surnames. And he was he is just 21 years old and he was born and he lived in Irkutsk region and Irkutsk region is really really far away in Siberia. And of course people like that they don't have influence on Moscow and it is a Moscow decision to choose people from uh, poorly inhabited, depressive regions, uh, people for whom this salary or the ability to steal something, to loot something in Ukraine is a sign of uh, material prosperity, like, I don't know, a stolen conditioner or a stolen a pair of sneakers can lead to their financial stability or whatever. So people from such depressive uh, regions are mainly the soldiers that come to Ukraine and uh, their mothers, their relatives, they don't even know how to protest normally and they simply accept that. And they also offer money for uh, the soldiers who are killed in Ukraine and uh, many families treat that as a very serious mm, financial support, which also describes the tragedy of those Russian regions, which are actually not even Russian. So this 21 year old Russian came to Russian, came to uh, Ukraine on the 24th of February. And he says that his commander informed that they only need to enter Ukraine to travel to the city of Sume, uh, which was occupied and now is not occupied anymore. And that the main uh, task of uh, them is just to threaten the civilians. And all of that will be over in just three days. So once again, this proves that the initial plan of Putin was to conquer Ukraine in just three days and to make it one of this new Soviet republics under the rule of Moscow. But of course this plan failed and the column of their um, cars and techniques uh, was destroyed. The first car was blown up, they were not able to move and he decided to escape and many of them escaped. And first they were moving on foot and then they um, took away the cars of some civilians uh, these civilians managed to survive because they escaped into the woods or elsewhere and then they started to drive in the direction of one of the Ukrainian villages where the camp of Russian soldiers was and on the way to that village they um, 
met a man, a Ukrainian man, who was riding a bicycle and talking over the phone. And one of the men in of that Russian soldiers in the car ordered that 21-year-old Russian soldier to shoot this Ukrainian and because he might warn the Ukrainian armed forces. So they think the reason why he was killed was the fact that he talked over the phone. But of course, this was a 62-year-old man, not in the military uniform, without weapons, and there was no reason to kill him. The only reason was that he was Ukrainian. And this is definitely a military, a war crime, because no matter how weird this sounds, but wars also have rules. And armies that respect themselves, they follow this rule. So Russian army is definitely not an example of morale or a positive uh, image of strength. It is just about violence, crimes, looting, and disrespect even to their own fallen brothers. So uh, the man died and um, they moved to uh, further in the direction of that village. But in that close to that village, Ukrainian hunters met them and uh, shot their car. The driver was shot and some of the soldiers managed to escape. They were hiding somewhere on pig farms and elsewhere. And in a couple of days, they decided to give up. And when they met the first Ukrainian, I don't know, civilian or someone, they gave up and they were arrested. And uh, this soldier, he confirmed that he's guilty. He accepted life imprisonment. Um, he said he was sorry to the widow of that man. And uh, he simply wanted to survive. But I have looked at some of his conversations that were recorded and I don't see that he like really feels sorry. He's just trying to save his skin. We have <laughs> this phrase in Ukraine to say one skin. And, um, and of course, he's just 21 years old. He comes from a really poor uh, family where he had two more brothers and two more younger sisters and a mother. And he, after he graduated school, he went to the Russian army and he decided to sign a contract and his salary was $550. And with that salary, he managed to support his family. So he decided to come to Ukraine and to earn more. So you see the level of motivation of these people and the level of their morale. And of course, um, there are thousands of Ukrainians who died because of uh, uh, Russian soldiers' fear, absence of morale and so on. And I think that uh, from one today, this uh, soldier or a couple of days ago, during, after this trial, he received a, a life imprisonment sentence. But of course, there are options. Maybe he can be exchanged for uh, Ukrainian soldiers and even the widow of the man who was killed by that Russian soldier asked if it was possible to exchange him for the heroes of Mariupol of Azovstal. And I think that is a very strong and beautiful decision of hers. But uh, such trials are important. I personally, when I think about Putin and I think that he must be prosecuted and uh, I think he must be executed because of his crimes against humanity, at the moment I don't see if there is a mechanism like that. But I'm very grateful to all the journalists, to various international organizations, and of course to Ukrainians who record the crimes of the war. And many, uh, like this possibility that internet gives us, user-generated content, and even, uh, I don't know, various apartment chats uh, became uh, the um, uh, places where people store extremely valuable information. And I think it's important to record all that because um, all of this evidence shows the real size of the crimes. And uh, this is just like the diary of Anna Frank, which is very realistic. But back in the times of the Second World War, we were n people were not that much surrounded by technology that helped them to record these crimes. And today we have it. Uh, it is bad that we can record such things, but I do believe this may help people to see what is war, that there is nothing beautiful about that. 
that uh, maybe Russian society in the future, not now, but in the future, they will be able to see that there is nothing you can glorify about war, that it is just about death, injustice, uh, sacrifice. And of course, the Ukrainian part here, the protection of your own land, um, has a very strong motivation. And the Russian side that simply comes to kill, to loot and to hate uh, is extremely uh, ugly. And one of the questions that this Russian soldier asked, answered during the trial was actually, uh, what did you think about Ukraine? Did you know this is an independent state? And he answered, I did not care. So no matter what he says, that he confirms he's guilty, his main message is that he didn't care. And many of them don't care at all. And they don't even care about this Russian Mir or uh, anything else. They come here as uh, really bloodthirsty, um, I cannot say animals one again, once again, because animals are good in the majority of cases, but they come here like this orcs, to loot, to rape, to kill and to hate. And this must be really uh, bad people who come from really bad uh, environment. And this once again leads me to the idea that the work with the Russian society uh, will be really difficult. But this evidence, trial, courts and international attention to their war crimes can definitely help. Uh, in this really difficult process. Uh, thank you very much for your support, for your questions, for your coffees. Thank you so much for your uh, pictures of uh, Ukrainian flags in your cities. I am always glad to receive them on my email and you can find my email in the description of my channel. So I'm looking forward to uh, your next questions. Slava Ukraini!